Um, third, uh, for originalists whose theories aren't fully specified, there is a marked tendency uh, for them to wobble from case to case or to change their uh, assumptions along one or another dimension. Uh, in particular, I think, the dimension of whether originally expected applications determinately fix constitutional uh, meaning. Um, Brown against Board of Education is one uh, example. There are a number of cases where originalists will say, uh, speak as if they thought originally expected expectations um, fixed constitutional meanings, but then will depart from that in some uh, cases involving the constitutionality of affirmative action, uh, for example. Uh, fourth, precedent. Um, is a wild card for many originalists. And when originalists don't have fully specified theories of when precedent can trump original understanding, there's lots of room for wobble from case uh, to case. Um, but there are hard questions for others, too. It's not just for those originalists who say uh, that precedent uh, can count. Um, just one example among those originalists who say that that what the object of historical inquiry should be um, is the original meaning as fixed by an objective observer at the time a constitutional provision uh, was, was ratified. Uh, it's obvious that there would be, uh, just as there is today, a lot of disagreement about what constitutional provisions uh, would mean. There was uh, back at the time of the original understanding, uh, too, uh, here I will quote my law school classmate John uh, Harrison, uh, who says that in early debates about the Constitution, and here the quotation begins, when every interpreter's methodology, whatever it was, had to be originalist, because the origin had been so recent, interpreters' positions on constitutional questions overwhelmingly lined up with what they thought were good ideas. So. So far, I have been suggesting that many versions of originalism aren't sufficiently well specified <clears throat> to be capable of principled application across a variety of cases. Uh, the final comment that I would make is that principle is generally treated as a complementary adjective, but it is not necessarily so. Um, because from my perspective, a principled theory uh, that left it up for grabs, for example, whether Social Security and uh, paper money are constitutional, uh, would not be more desirable than a fully specified theory uh, that would potentially determine the answer to those questions on the ground that Social Security and paper money um, aren't constitutional uh, when judged by the original uh, understanding. Uh, along this dimension, I have some uh, sympathy with Justice Scalia when he says, I am an originalist, but I'm not a nut. <laughs> the third question that I see subsumed under the topic is whether um, originalism is a rationalization for conservatism. Uh, from what I've said already, it will be obvious that this will vary somewhat case to case. Um, but there are two ways, it seems to me, in which the originalism might be uh, a rationalization for conservatism. Uh, one is uh, in a case-by-case -case sense. And insofar as we're talking about case-by-case -case applications of what purports to be uh, originalist methodologies, um, then I think the less fully specified a theory is, uh, the more likely it is that any claim that it's originalism that determines any particular constitutional result is likely to be a rationalization because a less than fully specified originalist theory will often be consistent with multiple uh, results. Um, to me, a good recent example is the opinion of Justice uh, Scalia joined by Justice Thomas uh, in the Citizens United case. He says uh, originalism dictates the conclusion uh, that there is a right of um, corporations to spend money to uh, generate speech uh, about political campaigns. Uh, that's a plausible enough claim, but another uh, version of originalism, I think, could easily have generated the opposite uh, conclusion. Uh, the second sense in which originalism might be 
a rationalization for conservative outcomes uh, operates at the level of theory choice. Uh, when somebody says, I want to be an originalist or some kind of an originalist uh, in the first uh, instance. Um, everybody understands that when originalism was first propounded as a constitutional theory in the 1970s uh, and 1980s, it was partly because it was understood that originalism would have uh, a conservative valence. Um, since then, um, many originalists purport to have taken up uh, the position uh, that although it is a happy accident that originalism uh, would most often point to or support or be consistent with uh, conservative outcomes, uh, that's no part of the defense of the theory that the selection of a constitutional theory ought to be made on grounds that were totally neutral in the sense of being indifferent to uh, results. Um, my own view about uh, this, and I won't uh, try to develop it uh, at length here, I've written about it uh, before, uh, is that any constitutional theory needs to be judged by its results in the generality of cases. That is, any constitutional theory ought to bind uh, somebody to some results that he or she doesn't like, uh, but anybody who chooses a constitutional theory without some general awareness of the results uh, is being irresponsible and even reckless. Uh, I have never known of an originalist who didn't want to try to give some assurance that originalism wouldn't yield uh, disastrous results, such as invalidation of Social Security or paper money uh, or uh, whatever. Uh, and I think once somebody starts to look at the results, uh, anticipated results to, gen to judge a constitutional theory, it's just inevitable that some element of uh, ideological preference among the kinds of results that uh, it will yield will come into the picture um, in one or another way. Uh, so I do think that a fair amount of rationalization is going on insofar as originalists purport to say uh, that originalism ought to be chosen totally without regard to the results that it will uh, generate. Now, I think nearly everything that I have said so far is probably uh, relatively familiar in one or another way. Uh, arguments, uh, most of my arguments are ones that are similar to those uh, that have been made uh, before, but I'll try to conclude uh, with one uh, somewhat uh, original, I hope, and possibly counterintuitive uh, claim, uh, and that is the more principled an, an originalist theory is um, in the sense of um, yielding results um, in a perfectly determinate way uh, in every uh, case. Um, a theory that was totally determinate in this way could also be a rationalization for conservatism if the defender of the theory denied that the results that the perfectly principled uh, theory would yield provided any part of the justification for adopting the theory. Mm -hmm.